in Rishi Sunak's technocrat UK, Labour and its broadcasting arm, the BBC, call for Suella Braverman to be sacked. And because she's a Brexiteer, she promptly is sacked. Great move, Rishi. Do exactly what your enemies demand. Do what they want you to do. Brilliant. What is it about honesty and telling it like it is that so terrifies our timid little PM in number 10? Why can't Rishi deal with a Secretary of State who's popular with the people? Why in this increasingly deranged country do we recoil in horror from anyone who's got the guts to tell the truth? Suella lost her top job because she called the weekly pro-Palestine protests hate marches, which is what they are. Hundreds of thousands of British citizens hating Israel, despising Jews in deeply disturbing displays of mass anti-Semitism. Q, the Westminster bubblegum, predictably howling about Suella's inappropriate language. Never mind freedom of speech. She can't say that. She can and she did, followed naturally by the usual desperate collective bid by the body politic to silence sensible debate. And by the way, if you thought Sunak betrayed Brexit voters by bringing back from the Remainer dead arch-Europhile Jeremy Hunt as Chancellor, his ridiculous resuscitation of former Prime Minister David Cameron is treachery on an epic scale. A privileged Eton and Oxford type born into unimaginable wealth who simply did not, does not and never will understand the hopes dreams and fears of decent, hard-working people who did not inherit a colossal fortune. With his lurch towards the die-hard Remainer establishment and his rejection of Brexiteers, Sunak has stuck two fingers up to traditional Tory voters who agree that vast numbers of British demonstrators calling for the annihilation of Israel and the Jews who live there is not something the police should allow. And yet they do. Once again, last weekend, a tiny handful of pro-Palestinian marchers were arrested despite many illegal anti-Semitic banners and from the river to the sea chanting. Uh, but when right-wing demonstrators turned up in their self-appointed mission to protect the cenotaph, all of a sudden, there are 126 arrests. Naturally, the police calling on Tommy Robinson and his mates to stand down, while not remotely calling on the Palestine fans to stop breaking the law by calling for jihad, backing Hamas and comparing Israel to the Nazis. Many might conclude that this is the left-leaning cops, as Suella put it, playing favourites. Once again, Suella was right. The Rosas are biased and these are hate marches. But in Rishi's Britain, apparently the thing to do is to avoid the truth, which means he won't want to hear this truth. By bringing back yesterday's mediocre posh boy Remainer Cameron, the Prime Minister killed off the last remote chance the Tories had of winning the next election. What on earth was Sunak thinking? Answers on a postcard, please. Have you got any idea, uh, JJ? Because I'm damned if I have. Listen, I know the right part of the Tory party is against Cameron, but actually I think for most of the public, he harks back to a time when politics was safe, when the country was stable, when we weren't in a cost of living crisis, when there were adults in the room. The general public don't see him in the same way that we see Tony Blair, for example. Well, the, his judgment is very questionable. I mean, he was badly wrong on Brexit, completely misjudged the... Uh, mood of the public and therefore torpedoed his own career. Mm. He, he was always bad on Russia, dreadful on China. Was he bad on Russia? In 2014, when um, Putin went into... And, you know, I'm a he fan of Putin. He wanted to be mates with them. I know <laughs> you know, I'm right, a fan yeah. of Putin. He However, wanted to be mates with them all, didn't <laughs> But he also did say... He was the first world leader who said we should be putting sanctions on Russia if they continue to yeah. enter Ukraine. He was the first one to call for it. People are too harsh about him when it comes to Russia. Uh, uh, China he was wrong on, and Brexit he was badly well, look, wrong on, right? China is getting paid by Shut China. Up, JJ. He's getting it's paid Amanda, by Saudi so Arabia. Been, no, you've, that's been, what you're you've been droning on, talking all <laughs> rubbish about uh, Cameron. I mean, that's, it's a fair point, actually, but I, I don't tend to agree. But uh, what's your feeling about the uh, weird resuscitation of this long dead dinosaur, David Cameron? Well, this is like the most exciting thing to happen for us kind of political nerds. It's like a football transfer <laughs> deadline really? day, Leave isn't it? You know? the showbiz department, <laughs> I can do both. I can do both, though. Yeah. But, yeah. Are you calling a nerd, Amanda? 
Yeah. You two, basically. <laughs> Politics is showbiz for ugly people, which is exactly. why I have JJ yeah. on yeah. every week. You were saying, anyway. This has Before been I a... so rudely interrupted you. Just yes. did it again. <laughs> Go on, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> this has been, for whether you're a nerd or you're not a nerd, this has been mm. an exciting reshuffle day because it was just... I mean, who had David Cameron on their bingo card <laughs> oh, yeah. turning up? No Everyone was shocked. And um, apparently outside number 10, it was silent with all of the, the press. They just couldn't believe who was coming out of the, out of yeah, the what's car. What's he doing this, here? Like, yeah. He's forgotten something. <laughs> <laughs> so I left my shoes here for me. I'm like, yeah, I've been here years. Yeah. Even Larry the cat looked shocked. I mean, it was, it, it was one of those... You wouldn't have believed it, him coming out of that car. And there he is. And he's able to come out and give... I, I completely agree with you, actually, which is rare for us, but I really mm. do agree with you the fact that he he represents what could have been it, i think if he hadn't have fallen on his sword with this whole brexit thing if he just stuck to his guns and said either i'm going to be completely impartial or i'm not going to go through with the referendum if had a bit of backbone he had to go through the he referendum still, well he was promising choice. that he was <laughs> he promising lost. that himself he just though. lost is the problem no yeah <laughs> but i don't think he should have been the one to have have chosen a side before the result was out well hang on a second he did choose a side <laughs> And yeah, the side I don't was think he done it. Yeah, I don't think he should have done it. I don't think he should have chosen a side. He <laughs> shouldn't, not a clue. He not have, a clue. I don't think he's But he's not popular, mate. Everybody think, hates him. No, he shouldn't have chosen a side because it means that he was then had to... Yeah, he had to leave, didn't he? There's no choice. He'd, he I campaigned think, well, so he horrifically against He didn't against technically have to leave, but he did the decent thing. I think he is popular with people who aren't in the Tory party. People who, who support Suella Braverman are never going to like Cameron. He's moderate. He's a thinker. He's not blunt like Suella mm. was. So I think the wider public, this will not save the Tories. But what it will do is reduce the uh, amount of damage they're going to see. But he's great. Election. I mean, he's uh, he just looks Cameron's capable. Not great. He so is. He looks that. capable. <laughs> Look, the line there. He looks, he looks capable. He's experienced. Yeah, he's not he's capable. Young. He gets he everything wrong. Young. He was too useless, young to be useless leaving. Posh boy. <laughs> He Use was too young point. to be leaving politics when he did. Uh, no, and now what, what do you mean? Back. Who cares? He can some, come back and he's going to deliver... Some who went to Eaton and Oxford. <laughs> Look, no, if no, he I'm hadn't have left, these. my, point, you, my point before you keep rudely interrupting <laughs> me is that if he had stayed in his post... It, back then, after the referendum, we wouldn't have had to have suffered Boris Johnson, Liz Truss. We would be in such a better place. Oh. I think, I think honestly, this is a hugely, huge, huge move for, a hugely important move for Rishi to... Uh, to uh, would you, to, like, would to you like, like to know where this puts the Tories in terms of their chances at the next election? Well, uh, in the toilet. <laughs> no, but, I do not stand a chance at that. What about... But the, would you the, not say it was in the toilet before this? I mean, I, I think yeah, 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 Rishi is making about, important decisions now the, to see but, what happens in the future. Yeah, but what about the uh, red wall voters? Or everybody who voted Brexit? I think uh, we keep hearing the Tories are desperate to keep. Well, uh, Rishi Sunak just jettisoned them. They, I don't they, they I will don't not vote for that. the Tories I don't think now. Did. I think a, a lot of red wall voters, and I'm one of them people, I think we saw Cameron as being uh, the next evolution of Tony Blair. That's yeah. what we saw him as. Yeah. So I, I, I personally would rather have Cameron in office than have Cruella Braverman. Well, 100%. Did you well, see what uh, Nadine I, I, don't, I don't agree. I think Cruella Braverman had a handle on what the people are thinking. No, you're wrong. And, I, and, and I'm not going to put up with any more of this rubbish. But I know, about, you're wrong. You're wrong about, No, not you. I'm not having a go at you. I'll, I'll have a go at you in a minute. Uh, are you having a go at me? All this stuff about... Yeah, you two. Uh, all this stuff about what you can and cannot say. I wish people would just shut up. we got freedom of speech. If she wants to call them hate marches, they are. You and I saw those marches on Saturday. Yeah. They're, they're strange, aren't they? They're not menacing, no. they're quite friendly, and yet the banners and the posters are we hate Israel in the most strong terms. Well, wait, you, you said you can say what you want, you said. You, can uh, say what you, you said you can say what you want. So why can't they walk around with those banners then? Well, that's against the law. To say you hate Israel? No, well, it's not. It's a, well, if you put it around a, a swastika. A swastika, yeah, that part. And if you say from the river to the sea, jihad, uh, these are all Ill arguably against the law, but uh, we uh, digress. Uh, let's have a watch of a bad ad. Coming and the weather's extra cold, the kids are extra hungry and the milkman's extra bold. There's extra meat down at the butcher's to feed them nice and hot. It's a thing called extra specials and it needn't cost a lot. Next time you see the butcher, he will show you in a minute. Say an extra specials, hear me dear, I've stuck a ticket in it. Meat extra specials at your butchers now. <laughs> Meat extra specials. <laughs> do, do, you know, do you know what's 
crap about being as old as I am. <laughs> Go on. Is it means that Pam Ayres was in your youth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every three minutes she's on the telly with another one of those rubbish poems. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm sure she's a very nice lady and all that. <laughs> what is special meat, do you think, uh, I Amanda? I don't know why I'm it. asking you. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I'm asking you. I bet you've seen a bit of it, haven't you? <laughs> Go down to your local butchers. Yeah, 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 here's a special meat for you. Yeah, yeah, come yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I need a bit of special meat. <laughs> How do you think you tempted me in here? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we're in a ca carry on what just happened. Yeah. Smash hit new movie. Ooh, you know carry on films. I think we might. The thing that makes me laugh about carry on films is that most of the comedy revolves around the word it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just going around the corner to do it. Ooh! <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Man, all the word it is. <laughs> all right, time for mean tweets now. I think uh, you guys are going to read a lot about me, aren't you? Yes, I've got three about you. This is oh my, my is that all? This is, this is my hobby. Is that all? I like to collate them and then uh, <laughs> read out the best ones. And then write them. Then write them. Number one. I used to actually like Kevin O'Sullivan. Well, that's your first mistake. Yeah. Uh, he was straight talking. <laughs> he wasn't afraid to tell it how it was. He told the truth. But now, my goodness, what a f biased liar he is. Hashtag liar, liar, pants on fire. Kevin doesn't wear pants. Yeah. His pants aren't on yeah, fire. Exactly. They're not on fire. <laughs> and you, whoever you are, you can <laughs> cough. Here's number two. Please get Kevin O'Sullivan, they missed out the V, yeah. off air. He can't even string a sentence together without hand movement, pushing his glasses, or using uh, uh, I know uh, who this guy uh, is. A thousand times. <laughs> this is this guy. It's the same thing. It's all he goes on about. My hands and doing that. <laughs> and the fact that I once said, uh. So you two can f right off. Right, final Next. one. Final one. <laughs> Flicked onto talk TV. Loudmouth Kevin O'Sullivan. So f dim. So f ill informed. Yeah. <laughs> Just one thing, Kev. Yeah. Tie your hands to the chair. You're f Hopeless. It's yeah. the hands, man. They hate the hands. They're, they're a law unto themselves. <laughs> you know, they're, they're nothing to do with me. It is true, actually. And throughout my uh, checkered broadcasting career, I've tried to say, you've got to control your arms a bit. And I try and do it. And then it's just sort of, <laughs> they just start happening. You know, they are a law unto themselves. So nothing I can do about my arms, I'm afraid. Uh, I thought that you were else, conducting a, <laughs> an orchestra over there. That's what I thought you were <laughs> stuff do you want to say about me? So I'm going to talk about myself, because that's my oh, favourite thing shocker. to do. And, um, <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> well, I was talking to you about uh, train drivers and how I think they should all be sacked to make way for driverless trains so we can actually get to places on time yeah, and they're not yeah. on strike and, you know, all, all of this stuff. putting people out of work. <laughs> but, I was called, but, I was, <laughs> but I was called a bimbo who knows all about the railway, railway, just like Kevin. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that from, um, that, that's the ultimate <laughs> insult, to be like me. Like Kevin. <laughs> um, and then also, can I swear, because it's quite a naughty yeah, swear word. Swear. It's a really... <laughs> There's going to be a lot of bleeps on this show. Yeah. Aren't there? <laughs> Thankfully, she has zero chance of being Prime Minister, as she is a stupid... <laughs> <laughs> although, <laughs> although to be fair, it did not stop Boris Johnson or Liz Truss, which wow. is actually a fair point. You know who that's from? Sheila Devlin. <laughs> her own mother. Her own mother. Yeah, yeah, she's um, honest with um, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this show's going to be like a uh, Morse code or semaphore. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after this break. <laughs> Mad as hell, it's Kevin O'Sullivan. Those new BBC social media guidelines are in full. Basically, football bloke Gary Lineker is allowed to tweet his personal political opinions, and everyone else isn't. Basically, Saint Gary can post his loathing of what he'd predictably call the evil Tory government, and everyone else can't. After the dysfunctional debacle of Lefty Lineker notoriously comparing Rishi's migrant crisis policies to the Nazis and after a shambolic interlude getting away with it, confusion reigns at the state broadcaster where staff who don't happen to be the £1.3 million a year match of the day host 
aren't really sure what they're permitted to tweet and what they're banned from tweeting. Uh, the first big name victim of this distinctly dodgy grey area is former Countdown star Carol Vorderman, who has lost her job as a host on BBC Wales for doing precisely what Gary Lineker seems to have been told he can carry on doing. Carol is, of course, entitled to her opinion, uh, but no one on the payroll of a publicly funded broadcaster should be able to influence license fee payers like that. I don't hand over 159 quid a year for unbiased, unprejudiced TV and radio, only to be assailed by the massively biased, profoundly prejudiced Miss Vorderman's obsessive virtue signaling. So, yes, she had to go. As Carol pointed out, she refused to be silenced. Fine, keep quiet and you keep your job. Keep bashing the Tories and you don't keep your job. To borrow old Lord Sugar's famous catchphrase, you're fired. Uh, I don't think Vorderman will complain. She knew the rules, kind of, and then she broke them. So why doesn't Gary Lineker have to follow the same rules? Could it be that beleaguered bosses have decided that as the Beeb's number one sports presenter, St. Gary, is much more important than ex-loose woman Ms. Vorderman, who plays pop songs on a Saturday morning in Wales. Could it be that Lineker has been given the green light to do what will get everyone else the sack? If so, no wonder the legendary Leicester striker declared the bemusing new rules to be, and I quote, all very sensible. For the record, as far as I can work out, journalists and current affairs hosts are banned from expressing their political worldview, and now so are staff on flagship shows like Match of the Day, The Apprentice, Antiques Roadshow, The One Show, and Strictly Come Dancing. That, by my calculation, includes soccer's Gary Lineker. But to recap, if you're interested in Tess Daly's line on the Tories or Labour or exactly where she stands on the small boats, she can tell you. But not while Strictly is on air and not during a two-week window before and after the series. Are you following all of this? Me neither. Clear as mud, isn't it? But Lineker proves that the real rules are as follows. If you're a big star on a big BBC show, do exactly what you like. If you're not, be afraid. Be very afraid. Uh, yeah, so, JJ... What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. The rules aren't, aren't muddy. It's, it's clear. Right. You can't tweet anything against the government two weeks prior and two weeks after your big show's on BBC. It's simple. <laughs> so, Gary Lineker is saying he'll stick to it. So, expect him in summertime, two weeks after match day is finished, to say what everyone's about the government. Carl Vorderman refused to stick to that rule, so she's gone. Also, but he's BBC already Wales. tweeted. Who listens? Who listens to BBC Wales? Yeah, but he's, he's allowed to tweet this stuff. No, he's not. He is. No, he's not. He is. We well, can go back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> he's he is. No, he's not. It's, it's all about the fact he's a massive star. Everyone else can do it. What, she hasn't done anything that he hasn't done. But she... Why has she got the sack for saying they're a bunch of uh, crooks when he doesn't get the sack for saying they're like Nazis? That was before the rules were put in place, that comment made about the Nazis. Since the rules have been implemented, he has said, all very sensible. And he will adhere to the rules. Yeah, but he's been tweeting away. He still tweets. No, he's not tweeting. He still stuff. tweets his political he's, views. He he's does. Not, he's not tweeting he anything. He does. Yeah, he's not Trust tweeting, me. This he's is not tweeting nothing, against the government. This is nothing to... Don't back the BBC on this show. I'm not backing the... You're, you're fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll do that. I'll do, I'll do a sugar. <laughs> you're fired. You're fired. I'm not backing the BBC. I'm just saying that Lineker is following the rules. Vorderman refuses to follow the rules. Well, he's done several tweets since that are political. Political, but not in criticism of the government. That's well, OK. Well, all of his tweets are critical of the government, <laughs> aren't they, Amanda? Yeah. And, um, oh, God, and also, I don't think... Thank you, yes, Master yes. Kevin. <laughs> Whatever you say, Master Kevin. Kev's always right, what can I say? <laughs> I don't... I, I hate the fact that Carol takes it upon herself to think she's Carol, some sort of... your mates, are you? Well, not Miss after, not after this. Um, but I've been, I I've been a friend of Carol's for a long time. I like Carol, she's a nice girl, but... Uh, What's I've, happened to her, though? I think she has always been a nice got, girl. She seems but to have swallowed sort of uh, cool. mad politico pills. <laughs> she? And she wants to be this sort of martyr. She wants to, It's as if she's going to be this national treasure because she slags off the Tories. What I think she's made a massive mistake in doing is that she's going to be slagging them off now. She's lost her job. And then the Tories will probably lose in the election next year. Yeah. And then she won't have them to slag off. And then she won't have a job. So what does she end up doing? I mean, 
it just seems like she's not really thought it all through mm. and she's let hate take over i think absolutely have freedom of speech say whatever you want to say within reason that's not you know crossing that line that we all should stick I like to. Hate. All I'm, but I don't... All I'm saying, all I, I am think... saying is give hate a chance. But, <laughs> all together now. Oh, we With the orchestra, the orchestra hands. But, all, but there, no... There they go. There they go again. There they go. <laughs> it's like a horror film. <laughs> Uh, uh, by the way, on Monday, uh, Gary Lindica tweeted that Sura rather than had to go. Uh, that's kind of political, isn't it? It is political. There goes your entire it, point. It is, Thanks it is. very much, uh, JJ. <laughs> Thanks for coming along. Thank you. you need to get the evidence to back your points up. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord Sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see you with your suitcase rolling out into the back I, of the I just cab. want to be in that position one day. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah, you expect me to say thank you for the opportunity. You know? I'm not the old cockney git. <laughs> Stick your job up your ass. How about that? Try that. <laughs> uh, excuse me, you lot. Shut up. It's time for a bad ad. <laughs> Soft. Won't you tell me why the world in which you're living is so strange? Oh, Mr. Soft, how come everything around you is so soft and rearranged? Bite through the shell of a tree bore spearmint soft mint, and everything turns chewy and soft. They're crispy on the outside. Chewy on the inside. That is like us after a drink, isn't I'm it? Give up. <laughs> That's how we all. Isn't that terrifying? Uh, but you, said you knew it. I know. I remember that. We'll from see it again. Oh, Mr. Soft, <laughs> won't you tell me why the world in which you're living is so strange? Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. The next I mean, number one, I think. And that's for soft tree balls. <laughs> yeah, tree ball yeah. soft mints. Yeah, they're okay. delicious. And how old would that have been? That would have been like 87, 88. 87. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you are actually 68. <laughs> I'm 40 next year. Yeah, no, yeah you keep saying that. <laughs> For how many years have you been saying I'm 40 next year? That's About 10. 40. <laughs> uh, well, listen, I, I think that might have been a good show. Probably yeah. wasn't. <laughs> we tried our best. Uh, you two, I, I think you can almost come again, even you, JJ. So a warm thank you uh, to Amanda Devon from The Sun and uh, the brilliant JJ and the COB. I have been Kevin O'Sullivan. This has been What Just Happened. And if you're lucky, We'll be back, same time, same place, right here on Talk TV. What just happened? <laughs> People of Britain, do you fancy a good dose of common sense before bed? Because the Independent Republican Mike Graham is now in prime time. We still cover all the stories that matter and put the world to rights. We just do it a little bit later on. So don't miss the Independent Republican Mike Graham Monday to Thursday nights at 9 p.m. right after Piers Morgan Uncensored. Yes, the revolution will be televised. Look, I'm getting ready for my new primetime show on Talk TV and Radio, 7 o'clock Saturday night, James Whale Unleash. I don't need you coming in here, following me around with a cat. I'm so sorry about this. Saturdays at 7 on Talk TV.